if you are the kind of person that enjoys literature, learning stuff about new artists or artists they didn't know, this is the right video for you. Welcome, we are Lecture of Literature. I'm Bill, a student of literature, and today we are going to take a look at the story of Thomas Hadley, who was an American story writer, but he isn't really well known. What was his life like? What were some of the biggest influences on his writing? And which stories are worth it to read? This and much, much more we're going to find out in this video. I'm not going to be alone with my colleagues, but if you're alive for the past few weeks, I guess you probably heard that we're in quarantine and there's this coronavirus pandemic going on. So I'm gonna introduce them to digital. My first colleague, as usual, is Aaron, a journalist. Hey Aaron. My second colleague, as always, is an expert in the history field, Jason. Hello Jason. Hello there, Jason Haywood here. And again, as always, Mike, who is a director. Jason, can you please tell us something about his childhood? Thank you, Bill. So, Thomas Hedley, ingenious American author. He was born on 8th of August, 1842, in a small village near Lake Michigan. Uh, his parents were not rich, but they had just enough for living. Uh, ever since he was a small boy, he met another small boy called Jason Sampson. Uh, their parents uh, knew each other, so they met regularly, and Thomas and Jason became, became the best friends. Uh, there was no internet, obviously, back then, so they had to have uh, another sort of games. Um, one of those games uh, is shown to us in a short story called Old Bench by the Lake. Hadley wrote this story in a very interesting way. Experts believe that uh, in this story, Thomas he depicts himself in uh, two ways, actually. The first one is uh, he's, shown, he's shown to us as a small boy who is playing with his best friend Jason. Uh, and they are throwing those rocks in the lake just like this. Uh, but the second way he's shown to us is actually as an old man that is sitting on the bench by the lake. Another thing shown to us by this short story is Hadley's love for nature. We can see that when he's an old man, he enjoys uh, the view of the mountains and the forest uh, leaning over the lake. So he likes the calm of it. But actually, when he's a small boy, uh, we realize that he likes throwing rocks in the lake and he enjoys every moment that the nature can bring to him. So he's actually enjoying the dynamic side of uh, nature and he really takes advantage of it. But there is another story that Hadley wrote. It is called uh, Faithful Friendship. In this story, uh, we can see Thomas and Jason running from a grizzly bear. What is told by this is a sacrifice that Jason had to make for Thomas. Uh, it is thrilling and it's really exciting and also very sad. In reality, this reflects Jason's death during war, showing us Thomas's distaste of the war. As we continue in his life, we know that Thomas attended an ordinary school in his village. Uh, later, he also attended uh, public school and graduated. We also know that after he graduated, he already started on writing his short stories, but unfortunately none of them were preserved. And yes, Thomas didn't have a good luck even when he started writing. Civil war has started and uh, he had been called to army. He had to defend his state.
All right, that'll be it from me, Bill. Well, hello again. Now I'm going to talk about Thomas and the war. So he was called to defend the Union in the Civil War in 1861. And that was the same time when he met Melanie. Melanie was a beautiful, lovely girl who Thomas fell in love with crazily. And he was furious, broken, because he had to go to the war. This led him to believe that the war in general, not just the civil war, is a complete nonsense. Thomas had to undertake many unpleasant moments while serving for the country. Among other things, he lost his best friend Jason Sampson and he didn't have a chance to be there with him. Fortunate or unfortunate, decide yourself. He also fought in one of the most decisive and famous battles, Battle of Gettysburg, which the Union won, of course. And these experiences clearly portrayed in a short story called Living for Good, where one man murders another despite sympathizing with him. As you may presume, Thomas belonged to those, let's call them the lucky ones, who come back home happily. Yeah. I am going to tell you what we know about Thomas' late life. So after his wife left him, he became so devastated and he pretty much didn't have anything to live for. All he would do every day was sitting at the bench by the lake and catch fish. In one of his stories, Old Melanie, which was dedicated to the real Melanie, but the Melanie in this story was fictional, he talks about losing her. This story is from a perspective of Benjamin, who is a middle-aged guy, and there's a scene where he talks about how he, much he misses Melanie and how much he wishes to take back time and stuff. But what is interesting is that there, were, there was one scene where uh, Benjamin woke up, he was preparing coffee for Melanie, but suddenly his son showed up and when he showed up he was like, Dad, where's Melanie? She's not there. She's, she must have left or something. And he was like, no, I can't believe it. I'm just preparing some coffee and stuff, but it was it was true, and he was so devastated by it. And the even the story is written in a perspective that's so heartbreaking to read, and it's a really strong story. But in reality, when Melanie left him, he had nothing left. His daughter was already dead. Melanie left him. He did not have his parents' life anymore, so he was just the average guy with no reason to live. Years later, he was found dead near a lake. Thomas died believing that Melanie doesn't love him, she left him, and she will never think of him again. However, the reality was different. When Thomas died, a few days later, Melanie visited his house and he was not there. The house seemed abandoned. So she visited the lake where he often was. What she found was his dead body lying near the lake. That is how his story ended. Alright Bill, we'll continue. So after Thomas' wife left him, he returned to his job fishing, which he had always loved. After such turbulent experience of his daughter's death and his wife leaving him, he was completely devastated. He had no friends and the only thing that made him happy was when he caught a fish. Every day he went to go fishing and try to succeed. Fishing is that kind of a job where you have a lot of time along. And Thomas, uh, during this time, he was always thinking about what <laughs> bad had happened to him in his life. This made him feel even more depressed. He wanted to deal with it somehow. Usually people get rid of their psychical pain by telling it to another person, but Thomas had no friends. However, Thomas found his own way how to get rid of his psychical pain. He started writing short stories that described his 
life experience. He discovered that he was a pretty talented writer. Every time he went fishing he would take a piece of paper with him and worked on a short story while having his spare time. He was finally feeling relieved from all his psychical pain. The stories that he wrote represented all parts of his life. Uh, they were later published in one collection by his wife after his death. The collection contains stories from his youth, how he spent the time with his best friend who once saved his life, about his beloved wife, about the petrifying civil war and about his last years. However, his life wasn't the only topic that he wrote about. He always loved nature and he also wrote a lot of poems about his beloved habitat. He lived near a lake and he always loved to walk barefoot on the beach while looking at beautiful white swans. After his tragic death in 1895, the world was free to uncover a really intriguing fact. There is a character in short story Living for Good, once again, who has a photo of his girlfriend hidden in his pocket during the Civil War. The same thing applies to Thomas. Investigators found a photo of Melanie hidden in his pocket as well, but this time during the war with his faith. The same character shows up as a murderer. Hence, we may think Thomas blamed himself for killing someone or something. This still remains unanswered. Yeah, many people don't know about Thomas' disagreement with the church or probably with the religion as a whole. However, he has been strongly religious until the day when Melanie left him. This led him to live a tough life with Thomas. Many claim that he blamed God for his faith because of serving him for many years and getting a lonely, sad life as a gift. He shows his anger in living for good again, where a cross necklace is being focused on, first hanging around the face of the injured, and second, when a blood is splashed on it. Thomas may try to show us how Christianity lies to us, betrays us, and doesn't mean anything at all. So, this episode of Lecture of Literature was about the author Thomas Hadley. We could see some interesting scenarios from his life that also inspired him to write his short story collection, Stories from Bloody Good Times. We could see how he went through his youth, spending his time with his best friend, who once saved his life. We could see how he met his wife, how he went to the civil war, which was very traumatic for a peaceful person like him. There was also a scene of his daughter's death, with, who died basically in 13 years old. Uh, after that, his wife left him and from that moment he hated God and religion till his death. After such turbulent experience, Thomas started writing short stories about some of the milestones that he went through in his life. Writing helped him to get through all the pain of his life. Being a passionate fisherman whose deep thoughts are we now reading in his short story collection, he continued living his life. He killed himself at the age of 53. His wife found him later and was depressed from what she had done to him. After all this happened, his short story collection was published and then made him one of the most remarkable authors of his age. We think that his life can be an inspiration to others and that's why we made this video. We hope that the most of you found something remarkable or meaningful in his life and it encouraged you in a way. Oh. There is a chance to buy this great collection of his most famous short stories. But you have only one week for that. This book costs only $8. So what are you thinking about? You shouldn't be deciding too long. The link is in the description. Buy today. So, thanks for your attention. 
make sure to like this video and smash that subscribe button for more interesting videos like this one. We hope to see you all soon uh, within the next episode of the Lecture of Literature about some other remarkable author that appeared in the US history. Have a great day, goodbye.